If you're a solution architect, a system architect, a release train engineer, or any of these kind of roles, and you've wondered what is the role of architecture in PI planning, then this video is for you. Hey friends, I'm Ahmed Eskela, Agile and Productivity Coach based in the UK. In this Quick Tips video series, I provide you with some very simple insights that I wish I had when I started out. So let's have a look at the role of architecture in PI planning. Firstly, one of the first things that I would say is, is that making sure our PI planning event is that event that actually aligns all of the different teams together. It brings that alignment and coordination so that we can actually achieve a single outcome. So as far as architecture is concerned, we want to make sure that where we have high level design impact or changes or, or guidance that we need to give, we, we want to make that clear. Now the important thing to recognize is, is that what we're not looking to do at PI planning is to, is to have detailed level design because that's going to cause us problems and we're going to end up in a waterfall kind of a model. But what we are looking for is high level architectural and design guideline. So for example, one of the first things that I would do is when I'm looking at as if I was an architect or had a similar role, I would want to have a look at the features that are coming into the upcoming PI planning event. I would want to understand what the overall goals are, I'd want to understand what the roadmap is, and I want to, would want to ask myself a number of questions. So one of the questions would be is, given these goals that we actually have, are any of these likely to impact the overall high level build, high big building blocks for this system in a meaningful way? And is there any guidance that I wish to give around that. It could be we're shifting from synchronous to asynchronous, it could be we're moving to from on-premise to cloud, it could be we're adding in new APIs, new ways in which we uh, interact or connect the different systems together, or it could be a completely new technology that we're using. Regardless of what it is, we want to make sure that if there's anything that's happening at a macro level that's going to impact a number of different teams, we are clear on what that is, and we put together a simple slide that actually shows and outlines what that actually is. Now, at the beginning of your PI planning event, you want to be, when we start out, we want to make sure that architecture has a slot in that early stage so that it can outline any architectural changes or any architectural guidelines that it wishes to give to all of the different teams. So if you look on your screen over here, you'll see an example this is an example that I've taken from uh, basically New York University, an example that they gave on high level analysis and design. And this is the kind of level that we wish to actually be providing to our teams. We want to sort of big, big blocks, big boxes, um, high level design, and we're not going into too much detail, but we're showing how all of the nuts and bolts at the high level and macro level, how all of the things actually fit together. And so we want to be presenting this to the teams early on. So one of the things that I find is, is that basically frequently what happens is, is that the architecture sometimes get a bit of a backseat. And I think that especially where you've got a, an organization or you've got a project that actually has a complex architecture that's changing or that needs to be thinking about the future, the architectural runway, it's really important that you spend the time and it's given the emphasis that it's actually needed for your overall success of your PI and your project. Okay, so I hope you found that tip useful and look forward to seeing you in the next video. And if you want to get some more PI planning tips, then please click the link over here. And if you'd like to get some more information on how to run a PI, your PI planning event, then why not look at my PI Planning for Beginners series by clicking the link over here. And please do consider subscribing to this channel for more ideas, concepts and tips on PI Planning. Look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thanks very much. Goodbye.